This is an introduction to Entity Framework Core. Entity Framework Core, also called EF Core, is a complete rewrite from the ground up. If you have any experience with previous versions of Entity Framework, then you'll find lot of familiar features. EF Core is an ORM, Object Relational Mapper. It is lightweight, extensible, and open source framework. Like .NET Core, EF Core is also cross-platform. It works on Windows, Mac OS, Linux, etc. EF Core is Microsoft's official data access platform. What is an ORM? Well, ORM stands for Object Relational Mapper and it enables developers to work with the database using business objects. As a developer, we work with the application business objects and the ORM generates the SQL that the underlying database understands. In short, an ORM eliminates the need for most of the data access code that developers usually need to write. Now, let's understand the use of an ORM with an example. If we are developing an application to manage employees, we would have classes like employee, department, etc. within our application code. These classes are called the domain classes. Without an ORM like EF Core, we have to write lot of custom data access code to store and retrieve employee and department data from the underlying database. For example, to read, insert, update or delete data from the underlying database table, we have to write code in the application to generate the required SQL statements that the underlying database understands. Also, when the data is read from the database into our application, we again have to write custom code to map the database data to our model classes like this employee and department classes. This is a very common task that we do almost in every application. An ORM like EF Core can do all of this for us and saves a lot of time. It sits between our application code and the database. It eliminates the need for most of the custom data access code that we usually have to write without an ORM. EF Core supports both the code first approach and the database first approach. However, with the database first approach, there is very limited support in EF Core at the moment. With the code first approach, we first create our application domain classes like employee, department, customer, etc. In addition to these domain classes, we also create a special class that derives from the entity framework DB context class. Based on these domain and DB context classes, EF Core creates the database and the relevant tables. Out of the box, EF Core uses its default conventions to create the database and database tables. You can change these default conventions if you want to. We look at this code first approach in action in our upcoming videos. Sometimes we may have an existing database. When we have a database and the database tables already, we use the database first approach. With the database first approach, EF Core creates the DB context and domain classes based on the existing database schema. EF Core supports many relational and even non-relational databases. EF Core is able to do this by using plugin libraries called the database providers. These database providers are available as NuGet packages. You can find the complete list of database providers on this MSDN page. As you can see, EF Core supports a wide variety of databases, SQL Server, SQL Lite, even an in-memory database. I'll have the link to this page available in the description of this video. A database provider usually sits between EF Core and the database it supports. So this database provider contains the functionality specific to the database it supports. Functionality that is common across all the databases is in the EF Core component functionality that is specific to a database. For example, Microsoft SQL Server specific functionality is within the SQL Server provider for EF Core. We'll discuss more about this provider model in our upcoming videos. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.